he was 19 and green with a new M16, just doing what he had to do. He was dropped in the jungle where choppers would rumble with the smell of napalm in the air. And the sergeant said, look up ahead. Like a dark evil cloud, 1200 came down on him and 29 more. They fought for their lives, but most of them died in the 173rd Airborne. Those are the lyrics to a song titled 8th of November by Big and Rich. And they describe the topic of today's video, which is Operation Hump, and more specifically, Lawrence Joel. Now, America's war in Vietnam needs little introduction. However, something I've observed, learning about it in multiple history classes, is that some of the gorier details tend to be glazed over. And that is understandable. This was one of the most brutal and frankly unpleasant wars this country has ever fought. And that's not to say that all wars aren't terrible because all wars are terrible, but Vietnam was just nasty. Between the brutal tactics of the Viet Cong, the ongoing conflicts on the home front, the assassination of Kennedy, LBJ's seeming descent into madness, it was just not a good time for anybody. And either side of the ocean. So I do understand that these nastier details in Vietnam would be glazed over in a history curriculum, but I digress. So Operation Hump started as a simple search and destroy mission. There were some Viet Cong guerrillas that were reportedly fortifying some hills roughly 20 miles north of Bien Hoa. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right and I apologize if I mispronounced that. But anyway, so it started out simply enough. We're going to go here, we're going to root out these forces, we're going to take back these hills. But, as was the case in a lot of battles in Vietnam, things didn't go as planned. And barely an hour into the battle, Allied forces were ambushed by roughly 1,200 Viet Cong guerrillas armed with machine guns and shotguns. Now, needless to say, the 173rd Airborne took heavy casualties in this battle. And just as a perspective, this battle was roughly 24 hours long, a continuous day-long firefight. And that sets the stage for Lawrence Joel. Lawrence Joel was a combat medic and a sergeant first class in the 173rd Airborne. And during the battle, he certainly did his duty. He tended to the wounded as best he can, given the circumstances. But he truly went above and beyond that call of duty. As the 173rd Airborne came dangerously close to being overrun by the Viet Cong, he was ordered to get on a chopper and get out of Dodge. But he absolutely refused that order, and instead he chose to stay behind with the wounded and tend to them as best as he could. And you gotta remember just how hellish of a battle this was. There, were, there was gunfire everywhere, bullets whizzing past him, screams of the wounded, fire from napalm strikes. It was absolute hell on earth, but he refused to leave his brothers behind. As a matter of fact, he took a direct hit himself to the calf, which, ooh, that's gotta hurt. Anyway, he did so much for his brothers that he actually ran out of medical supplies later in the battle and chose to scavenge the battlefield for more. As a matter of fact, he could barely walk as he had taken not one but two direct hits to his lower body and essentially took a stick and jerry-rigged a crutch and limped across the battlefield. And once again, if you can imagine just how hellish this battlefield was, that was truly a bold move. And thanks to his efforts, there were many people that survived the battle. As a matter of fact, there was one point he was completely out of medical supplies and an American soldier had taken a severe gunshot wound to the chest. He took a plastic bag and jerry-rigged it so that he could seal up the wound temporarily. I'm not an expert on this stuff, but he essentially used a plastic bag to save a man's life. And that's really cool to think about. So, what happened to Lawrence Joel? First of all, he did survive the battle. 
As soon as was possible, he was airlifted out of there and was treated and made a full recovery. He continued to serve with honors throughout the Vietnam War. And in 1967, he was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his deeds on, during Operation Hump. Actually, he was the first African American to receive that honor while still alive since 1898. And as the official citation of his Medal of Honor reads, I'm concerned for his fellow soldiers at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty are in the highest traditions of the U.S. Army and reflect great credit upon himself and the armed forces of his country. Now, a parting thought about Lawrence Joel and the Congressional Medal of Honor. As accurate and profound as the official citation of that Medal of Honor is, I feel that it's too academic, and I feel that Medal of Honor citations always are a little too academic. They just can't begin to personify, to describe just how courageous and selfless these actions were. I mean, frankly, what Lawrence Joel did was absolutely incredible. It's the kind of thing that the vast majority of people simply could not do. And it's very unfortunate that the Medal of Honor is not able to encapsulate that, able to describe that and do it justice. And with that, I'll leave you all to ponder. Hasta luego, mes amis.